Hello everyone. So now that we have gone ahead and installed our Curator Community Edition and we have made sure everything is working fine, the first thing we want to do um, on this tutorial, we are learning how to configure LDAP or LDAPS so users can authenticate using our Active Directory infrastructure. So the first thing you want to do is go to admin tab. Once you go in there, you go to authentication. Once you get into authentication, you want to change this from system authentication to LDAP. So you can also configure AD um, or Active Directory. Uh, but this is known to be obsolete and it's it's not as secure as LDAP. So for this tutorial, we are specifically doing LDAP S um, using port 636 and a certificate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get the certificate from your domain controller or from your LDAP um, server. There's a command we're going to run. And once we do that, then we're going to go ahead and configure LDAP-S. Because LDAP-S requires, if you look at the IBM certificate, it requires you to have an SSL certificate. So um, we're going to select LDAP and we'll go ahead and click Add. At this point, I'm going to leave this open. Or I'll just close this for now, I guess, and I will log into my console as root. So once you log into your console, the first thing we want to do is change our directory into the Qreader Trusted Certificates directory. This is where Qreader saves its trusted certificates, um, your external trusted certificates. Um, used for different um, extensions and other things within Curator. So IBM requires that we save this LDAP as certificate from our domain control our LDAP center into that directory. So we want to cd opt curator conf trusted certificate okay and once we see the in there we can ls to see what we have in there as of right now we have three certificates types so um, I want you to note that IBM does support several certificate types so IBM does support um, the PEM, CRT, CERT, and DER certificate formats. As you can see in this directory here, um, we have different certificates for CRT, CERT, and <coughs> key. This particular key here um, is used for um, something else. Uh, we will cover that in future videos. But for now, we'll just pay attention to what we're trying to do. So the command we want to run to pull um, the certificate from our LDAP server is an SSL command. So we're going to use that SSL command to pull the certificate from the server. I'm going to have that command listed below in the um, comment in the video description. So you can go ahead and just copy it and paste it and not have to um, go through the trouble following me as I go ahead and do this tutorial. Alright, so once we are ready here into the directory, I will go ahead and paste that command. So if you can see, this command basically is going to um, copy um, the certificate from my domain controller, which that's the fully qualified domain name. You will have to change this and either put an IP address of your LDAP server or your domain controller and uh, leave this port here the same because we want to use port 636. And so you just need to change this one IP address or the fully qualified domain name 
of your domain control on LDAP server. Here is how we want to output this. So we're outputting it to a .pem. So remember, Qreta supports .pem. Because I guess if you get this directly from a Windows um, Active Directory server, it's going to be uh, .p7b file format. So we have to convert that to .pem, which we're doing on here. And this name don't have to look the same as mine. You can name the certificate anything within Curator. So two things to change. You change this to your IP address of your domain controller or the FQDN and then you change the certificate name to however you want it to be named. And so once you hit that, you press enter, it goes ahead and runs this command successfully. If you get any errors, make sure you check to be sure that you type the command incorrectly. Remember, it is listed below in the comments section or the video description. Then we'll go ahead and do LSL to list what we have in that directory. And we can see here that our certificate was added. So once we do that part, we are indeed done. So we'll go back to our Curator console and we'll go into sorry, our Curator UI. And then at this point, I can take this away and we'll go here into authentication. Once we go to authentication, we'll go to LDAP. At this stage, we'll click add. So the repository ID, you want to call this anything. It's just what um, you want to save it within Curator because you might have multiple LDAP or multiple LDAP S servers. And um, authentication servers you have within Curator and you want to call them different names. So for this one, we'll just give it um, AD1. Then for the server URL, you want to do L.S. And then we'll do the fully qualified um, name of our domain controller. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. Then we'll do TAC 636. So you want to leave SSL connection to true because that's what we'll be using with the certificate. You want to turn um, TLS connection to false. So if you're doing LDAP-S, SSL connection has to be set to true and TLS to false. If we were doing LDAP with port 389, you set SSL to false and TLS to true. So search entire base, yes, LDAP user field. Here you want to type SAM account name. Because that's what Microsoft um, Windows uses to look up account name. Um, you want to type SAM account name, okay? And uh, once you do that, for the user base DN, um, if you have a Windows server and you don't know what this is, you might want to go into your server and you go into the search bar and you search for ADSI edit. That stands for Active Directory Services Interfaces. So if you go in there, it's going to look like um, um, your um, Active, Dir Active Directory Users and Computers object. And once you open that, you can always go in there and get the um, user base DN in there. So for my domain, my user base DN is DC equals BTA comma DC equals comma. So yours should look something similar. For example, if your domain name is um, Microsoft.com. It's going to be DC Microsoft DC equals to dot com. You can also specify this, and you can also send this down to like an OU and put let's say agencies, and then comma and so on and so on. So for referral, we want to do follow, and then we're going to have to do authenticated bind because again, I hope that your um, Active Directory environment doesn't allow. But then an anonymous binds, which means anyone can look up. Um, here, I will. I'm using uh, service a service account that I have created that can only do AD lookups, and that's it. So, um, 
many of you are doing this in an organization or an enterprise level you want to do the same thing if it's just for your for home testing purposes it doesn't really matter so here the beta beta the username of the user account so which is sa.beta.curator and then we'll do the secure password and once we do that if you notice we can't save this because we have to test um, to make sure the connection is actually working for us to be able to save it so we'll go ahead and test and here you can just enter any um, username that you have um, created in your active so the user will be John Doe and then to the lookup it successfully found John Doe so it's successfully connected to the LDAP server with the certificate and the configuration we made so at this point you notice it gives us three options so we have three types of authorization so we have local which means we're going to use local user roles and security profiles configured in curator which is security profiles and user roles have user attributes and we have group based. So group based is basically using Active Directory groups to authenticate users, which means <clears throat> you just have to specify groups and which acts, which um, roles they have. And then once you specify that, the users actually are already in, in, since the groups are already in AD, all you need to do is add users into the groups. But meanwhile, um, with the local, authentication we're going to have to manually add users in here from active directory and then every time you do that you have to deploy changes so we'll go ahead and click save and once you save that on your system it's going to ask you for you to deploy changes mine doesn't show anything on here because the changes were already deployed so once you deploy changes um, note that there's two types of deployment so you have full configuration and deploy changes for this particular instance it wants you to deploy just changes if it says deploy changes you just do deploy changes if it says deploy full configuration changes that means you come and do this the difference between these two is the full configuration change um, does restart services the deploy changes doesn't so you want to be careful using full um, deploy because that restarts services including your event collector and process collectors and stuff like that um, so we'll go to users now now that we have that working we're going to go ahead and make sure john doe can log in here which is one of uh, my system administrators or my security administrators in my environment so as of right now only the admin which is the default administrator and curator can log in we're going to add john doe And once we do that, we'll give him a description, security admin, and then you have to put an email. So we'll do John Doe at bta.com. Once you do that, you have to give him a role. So if we did the group based authentication, remember all that's been taken care of in Active Directory. But since for this first part of the tutorial, we're doing local authentication we're going to give him an admin because he's an administrator and see it doesn't require you to input an pa a, a password anyway because it then uses the username and look up john doe in ad and then authenticates john doe using our ldap or our ldap s server with his ldap or active directory credentials so we don't need to specify a password we only need to specify a user and once the user tries to log in it goes to your um, LDAP server so we we'll hit save and once we save that you have to make sure the username is correct exactly as it is in your active directory environment so if your environment uses first and last first dot last names you have to specify it that way in my environment usernames or in my test environment usernames are just first last name so we will close that and then once we do that it's going to want us to deploy changes 
you can see it just wants deploy changes which is this one so we'll go ahead and do that depending on the speed of your virtual machine it might take anywhere between one to five minutes it might take longer again depending on your resources of your virtual machine So now that we're done deploying the changes, if you did configure any changes, so we'll go ahead and log out. And once we log out here, I'm going to log in as John Doe, and I'll enter um, John Doe's password. And once you hit the login, it also gives you a license agreement like a date for the first one. We'll go ahead and do accept. And there we go, we have John Doe signed in as our administrator. Well, thank you all for watching this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below. Um, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you.